flew in from Vancouver and I get in the airplane. This ever happened, you get on the plane and then you just sit there? They don't take off? They board everybody and then we're just sitting in a hot metal tube for like, like an hour and they're not telling us anything. We're all looking, why aren't we taking off? Finally, like seriously, almost an hour, we finally get the announcement. Uh, attention folks, this is uh, your captain, Captain Holling, up here in the flight deck. Sorry for the unscheduled delay, but we're not going to be taking off until uh, the co-pilot takes back what he said about me. I'm like, come on. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, or my buddy Brent is going to kick your butt. Isn't that right, Brent? Hey, wait, you're throwing me in the middle of some physical confrontation I, I didn't sign up for. But yes, I will uh, physically hurt whoever you ask. Um, well, I, you're used to physical confrontations. Um, you once uh, talked about uh, bare knuckle boxing with your uh, mother in the backyard and you popped her one. Yeah, it was in the kitchen, actually. Yeah, we used to box all the time. Now, of course, I, you know, elaborated on that. I uh, embellished the story for comedic effect. It all came from the point, like we used to, we used to box for fun. And I came close to hitting her once. And the notion of what that actually would have entailed, because my mother was a very uh, tough, scrappy, you know, depression era farm woman who was not to be messed with. And I... Uh, I played it in my mind what would have happened if I'd popped her one, and and that became a, a stand up bit that was a a staple of my act for quite a while. No, that, that's great. Uh, just let the viewers know um, there's a bit of a delay with uh, the video. I'm not sure um, you're a, you're a, on the southern. You're in a, a BC, correct? I am. I'm in Vancouver proper. So I'm not too sure what the uh, the reasoning is for the slow video, but your audio is clear. So let's just go through with that. Um, <clears throat> Corner Gas, great show, um, ended in 20, oh, 2009, I believe, after six seasons. Yeah, that's right. And um, I saw that, well, obviously, it was a successful show. You had a million views uh, per episode. And then something of note, um, you had two sitting prime ministers um, appearing on, uh, as doing cameos. I think it was Martin and, uh, and Harper, correct? That's right. They both did uh, cameos in the live action. And then later when we did the animated spinoff, the animated version, uh, we had Trudeau. So within the, the walls of Corner Gas, we had three sitting prime ministers make cameos. Wow. That was, I was trying to lead into a little bit of a joke. I'm not a jokester, so that's why it didn't work. I was going to ask you, if the show was running today, would you have our sitting prime minister on the show? But I guess he was. So Yes, he was. He was. It's important to do research before attempting any humor. I know for sure. This is a valuable lesson learned today. This is that's right. It's been that edutainment. <laughs> so, how are the ratings um, uh, for of the three prime minister cameos? Do you have numbers on the ratings of those, and which one had the highest ratings? I do not. I know that there was no significant dip or spike on it. They were people were there to watch Corner Gas, and then. Getting a cameo from the prime minister was sort of uh, gravy. It was like value added. We, uh, I don't even know that we promoted ahead of time, especially with the Paul Martin one, the first one, because we did it as sort of a gag where when Corner Gas was supposed to start, right at the hour it was supposed to start, uh, instead of Corner Gas, there was Paul Martin giving an address to Canada. And as he's giving an address, I sort of walk up behind him and ask him if he has to do this now, because this is usually the half hour that they give me. Um, so I think that was kind of a surprise to most people. Right, right. Um, before I forget, I want to let you know, um, you're very personal in my life and I'd like to thank you. Um, I just turned 40. Oh yeah. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, Happy birthday. As you did, you had to get certain, uh, medical examinations, well, you know, for insurance reasons. And as I was having my prostate exam just the other day, um, I was very, um, I, I thought about you, just letting you know. Nice. I, I'm flattered and humbled and creeped out. It's a real yeah. roller coaster of emotions over here. Yeah. And I had the same experience. Um, my proctologist had the same fireman's calendar stuck on July. So, yeah. But uh, we're, we're living uh, parallel lives. We are. We're brothers. Yeah. We're mother, mother. My proctologist, I think, is also a genealogist because the whole while he kept asking me, who's your daddy? <laughs> I'm not sure why 
I just kept saying, I don't think you know him. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So um, on your um, your butt pod, which is great, by the way, um, you've had some really, um, well, obviously anybody you bring on, they're going to be successful and uh, people um, in the industry per se. Uh, Kevin McDonald, Kids in the Hall. And then the recent one, Tim Long. Um, uh -huh. Great, great guy. Great writer for, um, what was it, uh, Letterman um, and The Simpsons. Yeah, I've interviewed Harry Shearer. <clears throat> And I thought Harry was actually a writer, but he was, he's just uh, just a voiceover. So how was um, how do you go about getting certain people to, to come on the butt pod? Is it uh, by request or a lot of it um, you're just thinking, this is somebody I want to talk to? Yeah, I usually just reach out to people that, I mean, usually I have some sort of relationship with whoever my guest is, uh, you know, varying degrees. Some of them are very close friends of mine. Some are just sort of, tangential acquaintances within the business and you just reach out and ask if they want to do it. The nice thing about, <clears throat> um, pardon me, the nice thing about doing a podcast in this day and age, we can do it rem remotely like this. So you're not asking somebody to, you know, pack up and head over to your house or studio or wherever you do it. Um, it's much easier for them to do it now. And it also opens up the world, right? Like we, the first guest on the second season of the butt pod was Tom Bergeron um, from, uh, well, from a million different TV hosting gigs. Um, and he just did it, you know, from his cabin in California, I believe is where, where he was sitting. And so it kind of opens up the, the world really. Right on. Um, do you have any, um, any on the plate per se, or how, how long in advance do you prepare these? Do you have somebody coming up that you'd like to mention or? Um, the the final this is sort of by request from my listeners uh they all want nancy my wife who played wanda on corner gas they all want her to be a guest on the buck pod and she's not super keen to to do it so uh it's taken some cajoling but she's agreed so for the she's going to be guest 13 the the final guest on uh season two of the butt pod that'll be i think three episodes from now so you you know, you can put that on your radar. If you want to hear me to... talk to my wife on, on the podcast, as per requested by my listeners, well, uh, that, I'm looking forward to that one. That's interesting. It's probably, she probably, you know, um, wanted to hedge it for so long because she talks to you every day, right? <laughs> Maybe. Well, it's just, we're, we're both sort of conscious about how much stuff we do together because we, we don't want to end up being, as my wife says, we don't, we don't want to be sunny and share. We're not a comedy team. We're, uh, and a, a lot of people, I think, thought, think that Nancy and I were together coming into Corner Gas, and we weren't. We met doing Corner Gas. That's how we met. So we have very separate lives and histories and tracks. Um, and then we just kind of uh, met doing the show and, and got together that way. So we sort of make an effort to not do too much stuff together so we don't end up looking like a comedy team. Right, right. So stand-up wise, um, obviously that's uh, your bread and butter. Um, you've got a show coming up, uh, I believe, on Friday in Kootenay. Yes, that's right. Uh, Creston, Creston, BC. So there's a, there's a butt plug for uh, Creston, BC. Oh, you you've been sitting on that. Everybody sits and waits on that gag. Here's the th this is the important thing to do when you think of a gag involving the last name Butt. You got to think to yourself. Let's see. Is it likely that 9,000 other people have said the same gag and then rein it in? That's the that's the chore with comedy. I got to be totally honest with you. I thought of that about five minutes ago. Well, well before we went live, because I was asking you to do that um, plug for um, Italian Fest, right? Sure. And then it, it just came to be butt plug, and I'm, I'm totally honest with you. I, I haven't uh, uh, seen it before or, or heard a reference to it, but now that you say that, pretty sure yeah. it's, obvious. It's, one, it's one of those gags right it's one of those when you have the last name but you get you get it's a it's a mixture of desensitized and overly sensitive to yeah. people one of the things i used to collect a, a collection of headlines whenever somebody would write an article about me doing comedy and it was the headline was always the butt of the jokes yeah, yeah. and you know each one of them thought aha i have it i have the 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 brain bolt that no one else has thought of. Which everybody else has thought of. Yeah. 
Well, I think just, I got you. Just with one of one. those things. I think I did get you with one. With uh, if you don't subscribe, my guest Brent's going to kick your butt. That's a, that's yes. an original. Yes, nobody's added the phrase "kick your butt" in relation to me before. All right. Well, on my channel, anyways. <laughs> that's right. So, Anything you can say here now, you'd be the first one on your channel to say it. That's I think. right. Well, that's what I go with. So. <clears throat> My channel is predominantly um, rock and roll, hard rock musicians, but I've segued into some comedians, uh, some of your colleagues, Derek Sagan, Glenn Foster, um, and I'll even do some Richard Serrett, you know, the um, UFO kind of thing, the Strange Planet stuff. Um, oh, yes. So speaking of music, uh, who would you say uh, is a Canadian band or musician uh, that you're fond of? Well, I mean, there's lots. It's hard to... It's hard to pick. You know who I think is sort of an underrated band, especially internationally, is Prism. Vancouver band, predominantly from the 70s. Yeah. Such a good band. Um, but uh, I'm, a you know, Queen City Kids was another, that was another great band. Most More from the 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Regina band, Queen City Kids. They have my favorite guitar riff of all time. They had a song called Dance. It had the best guitar riff of all time. What's what's um, the song called? It's called Dance. Dance by Queen City Kids. I haven't heard of that band. Um, unfortunately, and fortunately, I'm going Kids. to. They're um, in the uh, Western Canadian Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Wow, I did not, I did not know that. My dog so, has just walked in behind me. You're you're gonna hear him okay. drinking water for a little bit. What's uh, what's your um, canine's name? Oliver. Oh. Oliver, nice. he just, just turned 14. Wow. Yeah, yeah, but he's doing pretty good for an old-timer. Pretty healthy. Days, so he's she's, he's going to drink for 20 appetite. minutes. <laughs> he's got an appetite for sure. He's just munching down there. That's water. That's water he's having. Oh, okay. Well, if he's lost his teeth, he could be gum and water. So that's that could be a meal. Now he's going to... He has a great sense of where the camera is. He can always look, find himself right in shot. Has he ever looked at the webcam? No, it's a little out of his reach. Oh, okay, for sure, for sure. <laughs> okay, um, so I don't want to take up too much time of too much of your valuable, valuable time, but I do want to touch on something, and it was the reason why we're speaking, um, and it's huge. Yeah, another yes. Um, um, October is it twenty third? The publication of your novel, huge, is going to be released. Is it the twenty third of October? It's the third of October. Okay, in the year twenty twenty three. Yeah. That's October 3rd of this year, uh, my novel, my debut novel, uh, mm -hmm. is released. It's it's available for pre-order now. You can pre-order it, which is um, kind of a, something I learned. I didn't realize how important pre-orders are to the success of a book down the road. But yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a big deal getting those pre-orders in. But it's available. It'll be on bookshelves October 3rd. So interestingly, just a segue here, pre-order for the hard copy and paperback. It's just coming out in trade paperback. So I'm wondering why they delay. Is it kind of, uh, do you think it's a commercial push to get the anticipation going? Because if they have the paperback ready. Well, they don't have the paperback ready. Oh. That's 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 why it's, that's the pre part of pre-order is you're ordering oh. before it is available I, or even made. I get it. I get it. I get it's saying. one of the things that tells them how many books to print. So oh. if you have. You know, a pre-order, if, if you get eight pre-orders, they're like, I, hmm, gotcha. I don't know how yeah. many of these books we should print up. But if you get 80,000 pre-orders, they're like, all right, let's print 100,000 copies at least. Get some more know. trees down. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I misunderstood that. Yeah, that's that's great uh, information for me. So you can, can you get it on um, Kindle or E uh, a lot earlier? Yes. Yes, okay. both of those. So there's a, you can get the E version. There will be an audio version, which I'm going to be narrating myself. And uh, the trade paperback. When can, the uh, what's, what's the links for those? The easiest thing is to just go to either my website, brentbutt.com, or go to hugethenovel.com. Either of those will have, uh, there's a, a, a link to all the places, because it's available for pre-order in Canada and the U.S. only. Mm -hmm. um, and so all the U.S. links and Canadian links are there at hugethenovel.com. Perfect. And um, obviously the book um, is um, very well written because Doubleday doesn't double down on anything 
other than um you know very well written books um well i like to think so we all well, they're they're it's they're a staple of the industry here in canada yeah. so um give the viewers a, a bit of a synopsis a short tidbit of um what this dark novel is about yeah, I mean that's the that's the main thing that has surprised a lot of people when they heard that I had a novel coming out is that it's not actually a comedy; it's sort of a dark psychological thriller. It's about comedy, though. It it follows three comedians on the road, um, three comedians on a run of rural shows across, uh, you know, a, a remote stretch of countryside, and two of the comedians do not have a disturbing capacity for violence. One of them does, and. Uh, Unfortunately, the one who does is also huge. He's a uh, enormous and a very dangerous man. He's much more dangerous than he is funny, and uh, the 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 road trip soon becomes sort of less about getting laughs and more about getting off the road alive. Um, it becomes a very dangerous situation for two of the three comedians. Is this based yeah, on so, a sort true of a story? dark psychological thriller? Uh, uh, dark psychological thriller that takes place. Uh, sort of between Manitoba and Ontario. One of the comedians is from Chicago. One is from Dublin, Ireland. And the, the third one, the dangerous one, is a, a local kid from Manitoba. And, um, yeah, they, they head out on the road and have some very dark and scary adventures. So is this so this is nonfiction that's based on true experiences? No true experiences. Um, oh. But it's sort of based on the notion of, you know, I think if you talk to most comedians, they, they, there have been times on the road when they find themselves paired up with somebody that it becomes clear that this person is maybe not wired up right, is maybe a little dangerous and is going to be problematic. And to what degree am I going to get hauled into some difficult situations based on this person's bad decision making? And it's sort of, you know, it's based on that notion. I, I've certainly been on the road with some people that made me wonder how safe we were yeah there's um it's making me think of spinal tap and there's a fine line between clever and stupid so it'll be the same thing with there's a fine line between funny and psychotic yeah i think they i think the two things are sort of intertwined in in some ways and then there are moments when um you know it sort of steps over that line Awesome. Okay, so it's I will... It's a thin fabric that separates neuroses from comedy. Well, that's what they say. That's Yeah, for sure. Well, they say the same thing about genius and psych psychosis and psychotic. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a very thin fabric that se separates them sometimes. It's easy to get some leakage. So before I let you go, I just want to talk a bit about hockey. I know you're a hockey fan. Are you still watching it now that the Canadian teams are out? Um. Yeah. Sort of like I don't, you know, plan my day around it. But if I find myself at home and there's nothing else to do, I'll pop it on. I'll check the scores, you know, throughout the game certainly. Um, but I'm I'm less interested now than I was before, right. when there was still a, a couple of Canadian teams in it. But um, yeah, so I kind of find myself sort of pulling now for Carolina, but not to any great degree. I'm not going to be heartbroken or ecstatic with who with whoever wins it now i'm sort of i'm mostly just happy that boston's out of it boston got booted in the first round yeah. after having this record-breaking season yeah to me that is uh a it's kind of hilarious and b um you know i i'm still licking the wounds of 2011 when boston beat the canucks in yeah. game seven so you've been a canucks fan all of your life or or just because you grew up in the west um was it... Yeah, not all of my life. Um, I grew up in Saskatchewan. We don't have yeah. an NHL team. So, um, you know, yes. just kind of watched whoever came along uh, on Hockey Night in Canada. Yeah. And I was a I was a goalie myself, so I was fascinated with Ken Dryden and mm -hmm. Mike Palmatier. Yeah. So, but I moved to Vancouver in 1993. Um, and it was, you know, uh, the Canucks had just had a... Uh, you know, a tremendous run. The city was very excited. It was easy to get swept up in Canuck mania. Mm. And uh, I was on board very, quite quickly. I became a, a Canucks fan. Right on. Um, the Leafs just got eliminated. And actually, <clears throat> you're familiar with Sault Ste. Marie, where I am. 
you've played yeah. here a few times and uh our gm well the gm of uh the leafs kyle dubas is a sault Ste. marie native so um it was heartbreaking i didn't for... know that yeah and well sheldon keith coached the hounds for uh well, uh, Dubas came in as the youngest GM in the OHL. I think he was 29. He brought in Keefe, and uh, the Sioux had some successful runs. We never quite made it, but um, I hadn't been watching the NHL for years, to be honest with you, Brent. Um, I got jaded with the salaries and all that stuff and the whining over $2 million. So I'd watch junior hockey, but <clears throat> excuse me, this year, I decided to follow the NHL just out of boredom, and the fact that you know maybe a local boy, Kyle Dubas, can... Can, and and Sheldon Keith ties and uh, there's a few other Greyhound former Greyhounds that were on the lease. So yeah, I was kind of bummed out when they lost, but um, at least they made it uh, past the first round this time. Yeah, yeah, something to be said for that. So you know, baby steps. Next year, maybe they'll get into the third round. Yep, and uh, and then time. they'll then they'll get into the uh, finals. And by that time, the Canucks will have got their wheels back underneath them and. Swoop it! Wouldn't that be great? Like a, a Toronto Maple Leaf Vancouver Canuck final. Yeah, I don't, um, it I don't would be think bad don't, for the U.S. market. But it I was just going to say the TV contracts. They probably have something stipulated that can't happen. <laughs> yeah, hard to put that kind of thing on paper. I think it's yeah. much more backdoor shenanigans. Yeah, which happens, by the way. Sure. But, um, before I let you go, I just want to ask you: upcoming comedians. Who would you say in Canada is somebody we, we need to watch out for? Um, Besides me. You know, Ivan Ivan Decker is, uh, you know, I wouldn't call him up and coming anymore. He he used to, I used to travel with him. He, he was my opening act for a long time. I was a big, big fan of his, still am. But he's gone on to uh, do tremendous things. Um, he's had a Netflix special. He's about to have... Another special come out, and they, you know, done on Conan and, and all that kind of stuff. He's a very, very funny comedian. Um, Katie Allen Humphreys is somebody that always makes me laugh. Very original thinker. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Locke, right, Toronto comedian, very funny dude. There's tons. the The future of Canadian comedy is in tremendously original and creative hands. So we're in good shape. Right, right. Oh, you're familiar with your buddy Jerry D. I am, yeah. Should Jerry come on my show? I don't see why he would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to. Why not? Sure. Thanks. I'm not going to. You if somebody doesn't want to come on your show, you can't harangue them to come on. Have you asked him to come on the show and he's cold, coldly slammed you down? Is that no? What's he going hasn't. On? Um, we've corresponded once, but um, you know, he's just very busy. And um, but I harangued you. And, and by the yeah. way, I want to thank George. Is it pronounced Caetano, your manager? Yeah, George Caetano, yeah, at my uh, manager's office. He's the best. He is He's the best. He's uh, a logistical wizard. And, he is uh, great. I want to thank him for this as well. Um, he's the, he's the reason I'm here. Listen, he's the he's – the, I'm here because he told me to sit down and talk to you. I do what George tells me to do. Well, he George did his research then, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> He knows. He knows you're a linchpin in Canadian entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, Brent, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. That's what that. That's what yeah. you want your people to do, right? Everybody, subscribe to the channel. Get me up to a thousand. Um, appreciate your time, Brent, and uh, we look forward to you next time you're in Northern Ontario. My pleasure. Lovely to chat with you. See you down the road. All right. Thanks, Brent.